Hey, friends all over the world, listen to me. Please, please stop believing this lie. It's destroying people. It's ruining people's lives. It's causing folks to miss out on so many things. Stop believing this lie and stop believing it immediately. Please, if you know what's best for you, please stop believing this lie. We hear it time and time again. You hear it all over the place. People believe it full sale. Never even investigate it. Never even think about it. Never even ponder what this really means. But it's a lie. Here it is. There's beauty in my brokenness. I was I was I was over in a in a in a, uh, the Caribbean island and they were singing this song. They were singing this song. There's beauty in my brokenness. No, it's not. Stop lying. Let me tell you something. Your brokenness is not beautiful, and I don't know where we got this from. It's an American construct. It's an American iteration. It's not Christianity. You know, this idea that, well, you know, you know, I just, my brokenness, my brokenness. I, I, I was uh, uh, talking to somebody from Africa. We were in a room together and uh, we were all in, in a gathering together and this show came on television and, uh, and, and the woman was talking about how, you know, her father wasn't in her life and and talking about how all these things that are, they're going through, and this was an adult, maybe in her mid forties, fifties, talking about you know I'm just I'm so broken, and the 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 uh, the African lady was looking at the TV screen and she says, "What kind of ridiculous nonsense is this?" She said, "You Americans are always so emotional." I mean, you got people in Africa that've been in civil wars, seen genocide who act more stable than the average American who got dumped when they were 10 years old. There's beauty in my brokenness and we've used brokenness as an excuse to continue to operate in dysfunctional behavior. We've used it, especially in American culture, as a license to act ignorant, to make foolish decisions, to be unaccountable, and we've used it as a pretext for our refusal to grow and mature. There's beauty in my broken, your brokenness is not, be where do we get that from? That's not in the Bible. Your, the, your brokenness is not beautiful. You know what's beautiful? Wholeness is beautiful. You know what's beautiful? Maturity is, is beautiful. You know what's beautiful? Growth <laughs> is beautiful. That's what's beautiful. Not being dysfunctional. Being dysfunctional is not beautiful. Being dysfunctional is not a beautiful thing. And we, people, they relish they 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 um they they sort of um rejoice in this and stop taking scriptures out of context beauty for ashes does not have anything to do with being broken beauty for ashes means that i will exchange your ashes for beauty if you surrender it to god Jesus didn't go to the man at the pool of Bethesda and say, you know what, you're so there's so much beauty in your brokenness right now and start crying. No, he said, will you be made whole? He said, will you be made whole? And don't give me that. Don't try to don't try to take that script out of context. In in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul says, My strength is made perfect in his weakness. Yes, his grace is sufficient for us, and our strength is made perfect in weakness in the sense that our limitations, our inabilities, as we lean on the everlasting arm of Christ 
as we lean into him by faith, we see the demonstration of his supernatural power. That's not the same as you continuing in dysfunction for the, for the last 30 years of your life, singing the song, there's beauty in my brokenness. And then we've made Jesus an enabler. We've had false doctrine and false teaching, teaching people that Jesus is an enabler to their brokenness. Well, he's just, he sees your brokenness and he just longs. That's not Jesus. That, that is, I don't know, that's Fabio. That's not Jesus. We, we, we have turned Jesus into an American soap opera. That's not Jesus. Jesus is not sitting there. The Bible describes him as he that walks amongst the candlesticks with feet as fine brass, whose eyes are like flames of fire. He is, he is, he is, he is penetrating our hearts, calling us to be conformed to his image. He's not sitting there saying, he is so broken. I'm longing for your brokenness. And people are using this as an excuse in our communities, women, men, using this as an excuse to disarm people from holding them accountable. If you are in your 30s, you have no excuse to be acting in a way that's reprehensible. That's your choice. You are choosing to remain in a broken place. That has nothing to do with Jesus, nothing to do with the Holy Ghost, nothing to do with God. And we need to stop lying to you. That's not cute. It's not cute. It's not cute to throw temper tantrums at 40. Something is wrong and you need to get healed immediately. You need to get healed immediately. You know, I'm seeing this thing, especially amongst my age group and younger, right? There is this blame shifting culture, this, this refusal to take responsibility for our actions. It's always somebody else's fault. It's always, well, well, you know, my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, it's always some, when are we going to take responsibility for our own choices? Yes, you may have been molested. Nobody chose you to get pregnant five times from five different baby baby daddies. That's you. That's, that's not God. That's you. You did that. And until you acknowledge what you did, you will never get free. Until you acknowledge you. We have we have raised a generation of enabled, entitled irresponsible blame shifters. And we've used Christianity as the pretext to justify this behavior. Enabled, entitled, irresponsible, unaccountable, I just added one, blame shifters. Everything's everybody else's fault but yours. When are you gonna say, you know what? I know I've been through hell and a handbasket, but at some point, I got to grow up. I got to do it for me. I got to do it for my children. You have adult women behaving like teenagers because we've told them, we've told them, you know what? You're broken. So you can, you get a pass because that's your, that's just your brokenness. You're just broken. You're just broken. You're just broken. There's beauty in your brokenness. No, it's not. Stop lying to these people. Stop. Stop lying. It's not cute. It's not beautiful. It's ugly. It makes you ugly. It's not. It's not. Men too. That's why you got 40-year-old men living at home with their mama. You're 40 and you live at home with your mother. You're, you're like a baby. You live in a crib. You need a bottle. Why? Because we said, well, we, you know, you've been through a lot of stuff. Grow up. In Jesus name. How many healing lines are you going to go through? How many hands are going to be laid on you? How many books are you going to read? How many conferences are you going to attend before you make a decision? You know, I got to change. 
I got to change my way. I can't keep living this way. If you're broke, it's your fault. If you're unhealthy, it's your fault. If you're not advancing in life, it's your it's your fault. If if you're not if listen to this, if you're not taking advantage of opportunities, that's your fault. That victim mentality that we are preached as gospel is from the pit of hell. It's demonic. We we got people waiting on spiritual handouts and hand ups and feeling entitled. And if you don't cater to their brokenness, they get mad and throw a hissy fit. I'm leaving. I, I, okay, I, y'all don't understand me and y'all don't understand what I went through. You don't, you, you don't understand what I went through. <laughs> My dog got hit by a car. My dog got hit by a car. That's why I ain't got no job in 2021. Because 30 years ago, I saw my dog get hit by a car. And because he got hit by a car, I was traumatized. You better stop. You better stop. You better stop. And what's happening is if you hold on to this mentality, you will continue to sabotage and to destroy everything good God brings your way. You will destroy it and tear it apart with your hands. The Lord took me to a scripture, and I'm not trying to be gender specific here, but just as an example, the Bible says a wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman plucks it down with her hands. A foolish woman plucks it down with her hand. I had to, listen, I had to grow up one day and realize that everything in my life was based on the decisions that I was making. And so because of that, it forced me to make different decisions. If you want different, if you want a different outcome, make different decisions and stop blaming God and everybody else for your problems. I'm sorry. A lot of you are not going to like this. You're going to want to unfriend me and all of that unfollow. And see, that's the thing. That's what we do. When somebody makes us mad, we just unfollow them. I'm just going to unfollow you as if it's hurting the person if you want to follow me, somebody else is going to follow me in your place. Ten others will take your place. It doesn't make it doesn't make any difference to me. You can unfollow me, but ten other people, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand other people will take your place. Or you can say, you know what? You're right, Pastor. I'm tired of being a hot mess. That's what I'm tired of being. And I know that Jesus died on the cross not to make me a hot mess but to make me, listen to this, to make me hopeful, to make me a new creation, a new creation in Christ Jesus. He seated me in heavenly places far above principalities and powers and in every name that's named. See, I've been seated with him in heavenly places. You're not a victim anymore. You're not a victim anymore. You're not at the behest of your pain. Stop letting your pain be your prophet. Some of us have allowed our pain to prophesy to us and to tell us what our potential and our future will be. I refuse. And that's why I'm not, I'm not going to be sitting out here and they telling me because I'm African American or because my ancestors were slaves and that I am, you know, I am disadvantaged. That's just, that doesn't make any sense. Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood, filled me with the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, the devil is of a liar. Jesus did not shed his precious blood to make me an eternal victim. And I just got to wait till the sweet by and by while I live high and dry. The devil is a lie. No, get up in Jesus name, rise, take up your bed and walk, get off of your mat of affliction and pick it up. And in the Greek, when Jesus says, rise, take up your bed and walk. One of the things when it says walk there, uh, uh, it's a Greek word. It means to make due use of opportunities. There are opportunities that God is bringing your way to grow, to change, to, 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 to heal, uh, to 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 seize the blessing that he has for you. And if you're playing the fiddle,
If you're playing the fiddle, saying nobody knows the trouble I see. You're not a victim anymore. Stop using your brokenness as an excuse to continue to operate in deplorable behavior and grow up in Jesus' name.